Welcome to CCG. If you're new here, I'm Julie, this is Lyle, and we, we play, play games, games here. here. I aim to brighten your day. And today is the finale of One Final Fantasy 16. Oh yes, it's finally here. It's finally here. Months of hard work and grinding. Let's get into it's it. It's done. It's done. <laughs> Otto! Still alive, I see. Something <laughs> tells me that I saw on the horizon is your doing. How'd you that? It's a long story. One that I'd rather only tell once. Right. Oh, right, the floating island. All hands on deck, then. It was Joshua. Joshua did it. I didn't do it. Play like Joshua. Is this everyone? As I'm sure you've all guessed, the crystal which now commands the eastern skies was summoned by Ultima. He called it Origin. Now the significance of that name is as yet unclear. What does it matter what it's called? Its emergence tore Twinside asunder and wiped my homeland from the map. Mention of the Dominion Spires can be found in the oldest of Valisthian records. But to the best of my knowledge, none provide any hint as to their true nature. That they would prove the horns of some slumbering demon. Well, the Dominion's demise was at least quick. Elsewhere, the Republican army cannot hope to contain the chaos engulfing Randalar. Canva is in flames, and the Empire... Our allies are crying out for answers. I've sent the curse breakers to give them what assurances we can, but right now that amounts to fuck all. They wouldn't be able to stop what the skies have started in any case. People here and across the realm grow sicker with every passing day. Could it be that this new mother crystal is like the others? That it draws upon the land's ether? certainly looked that way from stone here if that were true it would explain the hastening spread of the blight since the crystal's appearance would it not and as the land's ether slowly rises to the surface it pulls corrupting all who cannot channel its energies rk above Ether floods below, and in the middle, here we languish, hopelessly entrapped. <laughs> it's all right. When we faced him at Stone here, Ultima told us his true power quickens in the halls of origin. Needless to say, we cannot allow that to continue. If we are to stop him, we will have to find a way into the crystal. How are we going to manage that then? It's up in the sky. And fast as she is, the Enterprise can't fly. <laughs> it's a lot to take in, and I reckon we'd all benefit from some time to clear our heads. The answer will come to us. Don't you worry. Ain't that right, Clive? Right. That's right. Well, go on, then. Bugger off. <laughs> Same goes for you, Clive. You won't solve anything like this. Trust me. Go and get some fresh air, right? Time mission? Something. Thank you. What more could we have? <laughs> yeah, I felt like we were wrapping everything up. Joshua seemed upset.
Ultima may have created us, but he doesn't make us who we are. Only we can do that. And if he would have us fight for our survival, so be it. It's what we've been doing all along. Much like Ultima himself, it would seem. His new world being naught but a means to survive. And so, we must contend to decide which of us shall inherit the land. Should Ultima prevail, it will mean death for us all. Of that, we can be certain. But even should he fail, what world awaits us? A withered, godless place where our newfound freedom will most like prove a chain in itself. Well, that may be, but a chain can always be broken. As long as one has the will to break it, it won't be easy. It may take generations, centuries of suffering. And that is if everyone plays their part. But it will happen. And when it does, it will be on our terms. That is the world that awaits us. <laughs> Indeed. And what better world could one wish for? But first, we have to reach that crystal. Then it's a good thing I have wings. You can barely stand, let alone fly. And only the founder knows what horrors await in those skies. Are you certain about this? Am I certain? I am the Phoenix. I will do what I must. This is our fight. Remember? All right. I yield. But only what you must, yes? I'm still your sworn shield. That you are. And what of my wings? <laughs> Lest you forget, you go to stand against a god. I would not have you succumb to fatigue before the fight begins. Ifrit. Your brother mentioned that some few of the Dominants who had lost their power to you were still able to prime. Is that true? It is. But their icons no longer submitted to their will. Ah. Then mine will have to be stronger. That you both might save your strength for the battle to come. You don't have to do this. If you do, there's a chance you might lose all you have left. And what have I but regret? My life ended in the Dominion. I fear death no more. Besides, I would have words with Ultima. Oh dear, no. He has much to answer for. We are in your debt, Dion. We can speak of debts when this is over. <laughs> Oscar, I told you to leave. Did you? Yeah. Where did you tell him to go to? To go to Deadpool. Oh. With Wade. Oh, right. to wish on a star. <laughs> that might not be such a bad idea. This is it, Jill. You know what I have to do. Why well, I have to do it. There's no turning back now. This is where our journey was leading us. Where it will end. For better or worse. 
I could pray to Metia for you. You'll be all right, won't you, Clive? You always are. I did promise we'd watch the moon together. I'll be waiting. Did we just fade to black? Was that the equivalent? No, I feel like that might be the equivalent, yeah. Nice. Now, oh, the question is... Oh, whoa! Oh, ha oh! What the frick? Maybe not last episode! Holy smokes! We got so much to do! Oh, guys. We were supposed to already say, there's two in here! There's two. While going was while the going was slow and not without the occasional run-in with some straggling orc, I saw Etta back safe to the Shadow Coast where Mid was waiting cunning with the Enterprise. On the voyage home, I like to think the poor lass opened up a little, telling us about her life and the life she wants for her baby. But I suppose it's up to us now to make certain the little one gets it. In the mood. In a mood. In a mood. In, in a the mood. mood. Oh, Karen. Those mean two different things. <laughs> in case you haven't noticed, your poor hound spends all his time of late on the rear deck whimpering like Gav in his cups. Something ain't right, and my gut tells me it's not to do with his supply of antelope bones. Okay. <sighs> what is it this time, Torgo? Yeah, Torgo. Come on. New power? Come on. Give me a new Torgo power. Uh, reluctant as I am to add to your burdens, I would ask your aid in a personal matter, albeit one that may be, be beneficial to your cause. There exists ancient texts deemed so injur injurious to modern thought that mere possession is deemed a crime, and it was a chance encounter with one such tome from a distance that sparked within me the scholastic curiosity which burns to this very day. I wish to enlist your aid in reclaiming that text. Should you require further incentive, know that I'm willing to offer compensation for services rendered. Oh, I didn't accept it. Something tells me this is no mere adventure story. Let's go. Uncle Byron. What do you like he's not important. <laughs> hmm? Three's company. Clive, my boy! Rutherford informs me that we owe you our thanks. Hadn't intended for you to get involved, but such are the times we live in, huh? I would have done the same for anyone else. You're far too modest, Clive. You'd make a terrible nobleman. <laughs> but tell me. Is the realm truly in as dire a state as Rutherford suggests? From what little I saw, you were right to be worried. Uh, I suppose I should have expected the worst. But I was rather hoping the great and good of the realm might have things a little more under control. Alas, it seems that firm leadership is in short supply these days, and without it, the people are bound to lose their way. We must move quickly. But where do we start? True, the challenges that face us are many. But in my estimation, there are two key areas to be addressed before any other. The realm's armies and her larders. As you've seen firsthand, it's every man and woman for themselves out there. Certain cities have banded together to try and maintain some semblance of order, yes. But such cases are few and far between. And yet, the only remedy for the chaos that faces us is unity. A unity that transcends even the borders laid down by our ancestors. In short, if Storm does not stand together, she will fall apart. That's but how would one even begin to unite the realm? The armies, my boy. As I told you already, we begin by restoring order among the ranks of those sworn to maintain it. Sadly, I doubt I could convince even the lowliest gaggle of privates to dig a latrine together. But I do know someone the High Commanders have been known to listen to on occasion. Field Marshal Eugen Havel. Oh, damn. I thought he was retired. He Heck of a was, name. until an Akashic army tore through Randalar and killed most of the rank and file. There is no man alive more capable. Literally. Mm -mm. And as luck would have it, I've already spoken with him on the matter. So what do you need me to do? Of course you have. 
And he's agreed to help. On one condition. That he first speaks with you personally. Of course. Havel has always been a man of frustratingly rigid principle. And he has certain qualms about clasping arms with, well, with an outlaw. Yeah, I get it. I that makes sense. That tracks. Virtues as best I could, of course. But I'm a sexy outlaw. Goat was adamant that he be allowed <laughs> to he will learn the day. <laughs> You don't mind, do you, my boy? Of course not. As long as chaos reigns, we will never build a better world. I'll do whatever it takes. And if the field marshal wishes <laughs> to speak reign. with me in person... <laughs> the chaos reign. ...then so be it. That's the spirit. I'll leave for Randalar at once. Would you send a Stolas? Of course. Rutherford is already in the Dalmechian capital. I'll have him tell Havel to expect you forthwith. Excellent. Thank you, Uncle. No, thank you, Clive. What do you want, Joshua? You won. You be nice to Joshua. <laughs> Clive, there's a will. Joshua, what's wrong? And don't say nothing. It's not nothing. I've received word from Cyril. The Undying have found Father's will, or something akin to it. His will. How and where? In the crypt beneath Rosalith Castle. After Kupka was kind enough to drive out the Imperials, the Undying took the opportunity to recover what relics of the Duchy yet remained. And in the process of doing so, they found a letter from Father. Damn. I'm surprised anything survived down there. Cyril asked that I join him in Tabor at my convenience. I have been meaning to go, but would you join me? Of no. Course. <laughs> do I, I have to? I in that letter as much as you do. Very well. I am ready to leave when you are. It's just Dad's will. It's not that important, it's not right? A big deal. Sid, I was wondering if you could help me. Sure. It depends what with. It depends what with. <laughs> free from his bonds is keen to join the curse breakers. As you know, the work we do is not easy, which is why we test every volunteer's suitability. I was hoping you could oversee this one's evaluation. Why just this uh, one? The, why this one? Yeah. Because he wants to be a scout. Oh. Good job. Our ranks are filled with men and women capable of breaking chains and putting slavers to the sword. But scouting, we're few with the nose for that. Which is why we still rely so heavily on Gav. So Gav should be doing And that. since he accompanies you on so many of your missions, I thought you might be better placed to recognize the traits in him that we should look for in those who'd fill his boots. No. Sounds reasonable. No, no, it doesn't. So you happy to oversee the boys' <laughs> test then? No. Where's Gav? <laughs> One can never have too many scouts. Truer words, Sid. I'll let the initiate know that you'll be attending his trial and that he is to proceed directly to Northreach in trial. readiness. Oh, I don't the present day. Yeah. My brain blanked and I read funeral, not trial. Jeez. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> what are we doing? Did you travel all the way here just to ask that question, just to go back to Northreach? Northreach. I don't suppose they could have chosen someone closer. Vivian, I read your note, and I'd be happy to help you find the book you're looking for. Thank you, Clive. But tracking it down will not be easy. Are you sure? Please. You have always granted me your wisdom and insight whenever I asked. It's only right that I return the favor. Or at least attempt to. You are too kind. Alas, what I ask of you is rather more trying than delivering the odd lecture. I spoke with Harpocrates to see if he had any inkling as to where another copy might be found, but... <sighs> But perhaps it is best that you hear the details from him. No, of course, I'll go over there too. Forgive me, Clive, for asking this of you. But this book, it set me on the path to becoming who I am today. Its importance cannot be overstated. Fair. So many exclamation points. Holy smokes. So many. I feel a little bit overwhelmed, don't you? A little bit. What do you oh, think happened to Miss... What'd you break this time? Sid, you have to help us. Mm -hmm. With what? 
You didn't take apart another of Mid's contraptions, did you? No. Well, yes. But that's not what we want to talk to you about. It's Miss Mid at all. She's been acting strange. Very strange. She's barely ever around. Girl's busy. When she is, she acts like we aren't even there. Her head's in a crowd. In the clouds. That's what I said. In the clouds. Well, she does have a lot on her mind. When did you last see her? Um, not long ago. Ah, right after she got back from saving me from Stone Ear. Then it's probably just about the Enterprise. It did take quite a battering on the way there and back. You didn't break it, did you, Sid? You really should be more careful around Miss Mididol. Like I was driving it. Oh, don't listen to her. Gosh, Even if you did you break seen her give up that wheel? She refuses. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah, we <laughs> broke it. Back it's not the magic we're letting a 16-year-old drive. <laughs> a ship. A bunch of people. A giant ship. Go and see if I can cheer her up. Through a metal you do that wall. For us. Stone wall. She's in her dungeon. Don't scare him. It's not a real dungeon. Don't scare Thanks him. Thanks for the warning. <laughs> Clive's gonna be like, oh my god, it's a dungeon? Best not go. <laughs> Never seen one of those before. Oh, oh, I've been up here. Okay, I recognize. I will not let them be forgotten. Sid, may I have... Why not? Everybody else is taking my time today. It is an honor to finally speak with you. My name is Herman. I've been with the Curse Breakers for some time now, and uh, I wish to be deployed to Ash. Any assignment will do. Why? No. The lands across the Narrow are too dangerous. I will not send good men and women to risk their lives needlessly. Why would you want to go back? I need to retrieve something. Something important. I was raised in an orphanage. The Badbach Conservatory. Or rather, yeah, that's that. There. It was not a place of nurture, solely to turn bearer children into mindless weapons. We were tortured until we feared no pain, tormented until our hearts turned to stone, and few ever survived long enough to become tools of the last king. I can't imagine. I lost so many. I... I can't even remember all their names. But they must be remembered. They Those cannot fade away, like... faceless, and... Well, it looks like something. The Institute. No, it's a cat on my life, guys. Okay. Not, not that kind of cat. I'm glad she had measured. Every name recorded. Every death. She can't see him because he's black and avoid a meticulous care. Yeah, I figured that would make him... <laughs> Sid, oh, that's awkward. Bears allow me <laughs> to travel to Ash and recover the registry so that my brothers and sisters Oh, we're gonna offer to go get it for him, we? Yeah. Yeah, no, I'll go You're instead. A good friend, Herman. But the fact remains that Ash is simply too dangerous. Sid, please. Even should it cost me my life. Too dangerous for you, Herman. But not for me. I'll go to Bad Back and find the registry. You will? I won't let you risk your life. I don't know how to thank you. You can start by telling me where I'll find this orphanage. The De Grace. Hidden in a forest. Overlooking the plains. All right. I'll see what I can find there. May the mothers guide you. If you want to thank me, I, I love pudding. Pudding! <laughs> Torgo, good boy! What's happening, Torgo? What's wrong? No, buddy. Pining because is you don't have a mate. Maybe because you imagine we gotta go what find a friend. Maybe. What do you see out there? <laughs> I never did ask where you got that anklet of yours. From Sid, that's why. On the day I brought him home. That long ago. And you're only thinking to ask this now? Sid saw that the pup had a habit of gnawing on his leg, since you ask. Clap back their iron on him to keep him from doing it. What was wrong, boy? I'll take like as not. Must have been hard on the poor whelp losing his loving masters at such a young age. 
doubly hard in being a frost wolf, torn away from his icons and all. Sid would always tell him, you want my iron gone, you find what it is you're looking for. I reckon what he was looking for was you. I'm sorry, Togo. Sorry for making you wait so long. Let's get that thing off you. Oh, but it's cute. Oh. <laughs> Doesn't sound like he wants it off. Indeed. <laughs> you miss it as much as the rest of us, don't you? Oh. You want me to go with you somewhere? Oh. Alright, lead the way, Torgo. Quick, aren't you? Glad you've been paying attention. Not nearly as much as you have, Lady Karen. Aye, good thing and all. It's not like Gav would have kept him in nuts and rubbed his belly these past ten summers. Your kindness is appreciated. Oh, hey, hey ma'am, sir. Sid, do you have a moment? By all means. <clears throat> it's my old master. Seems there's no escaping her. She found some way to send me a letter. She and something after. else. Records from a Waluda prison. Seems they were keeping a lot of bearers there. How did she come by such a thing? Finding bearers always was her strong point. And it seems the cells of Balmung Dark are full of them. Foreign captives, the masterless. Bearers no one would miss. And even better for her, bearers with no one to look after them. When Ether started lapping at the walls, the jailers fled. Leaving the bearers to be liberated by whoever happened to come along next. Sid, I'd like to believe that I've earned your trust by now. And while I'm well aware that you've forbidden curse breakers from traveling to Walud, I can't let those bearers die in their cells. I'd rather risk shipwreck on the shadow coast than leave them to starve. Yeah, we're going there anyway. Yeah. We'll be needing the Enterprise if we're going to navigate the Narrow. Does that mean... I'm making an exception that we travel together. And we <laughs> stay no longer than we have to. Ash is an inhospitable place at the best of times. We won't let the other guy go, but you're going to let her go. Leave. Yep. Some favoritism here, mister. Just a little bit. There was a name in the prison register. A name from my past. Chadwick. Another of my former master's protégés. A gifted soldier and the closest thing I had to family. The thought of him held captive in that place. He must be very important to you. He was. Is. Then we find him. The entrance to the prison lies in the shadow of Ravenwit walls, just beyond the portcullis. We should head there as quickly as we can. I only pray there are still bearers alive to save. As do I, Doris. Cool. Great. Just, you know. Ah, Clive, my boy. What a pleasure it is to see you. I'm sure it is. Apocrates. There's something I need to ask you. I've been charged with locating a book called From a Distance. Then you seek a rare gem indeed. One whose name I had not thought to hear from your lips. <sighs> You've been talking to Vivian. Right as always. Yeah, she didn't seem to keen to tell me very much. We have a reading table. I take it she didn't like what you had to say. <laughs> and yet I gather it did not <laughs> dissuade her. Clive, if the young professor has tasked you with obtaining a copy, I fear she asks the impossible. The executors would not allow it. The executors? Coveters of Secrets, a clandestine organization committed to the collection and intenebration of forbidden texts and technologies. One such text being the tome Vivian seeks. Chronicling as it does, the true history of the enslavement of bearers. A tale which could overturn the established order were it ever to become widely known. Or, so rumor has it, I've never actually read the thing, or even set eyes on it for that matter. How is it that I haven't heard of this organization? Why, secrecy is the executor's watchword. They lurk in the shadows, emerging only to seize that which must be seized, be it books, inventions, 
or people, before disappearing again, leaving nary a trace. Which would explain why Vivian's copy was snatched from her grasp not long after she found it. By the hand of the executors, yes. But what drives them? Self-interest or ideology? Fine question. Sadly, all that is known of the executors can be recounted in a single breath. You may just as soon ask me of their origins, numbers, or the identities of their leaders. Any answer I give would be pure speculation. Cool, let's go get it. My hunt was doomed from the first. What was Vivian expecting? That I pluck it from thin air? Yep. Let's do it. From thin air, no. From ash. We're going there anyways. Rumors of the executors are rife among the scholars of Storm, but rather less so across the strait. I have a friend. Well, I had a friend in the village of Garnick, a collector of rare tomes, upon which subject we would oft correspond. Alas, I have heard naught from him since the skies fell dark. And no doubt he too has turned. But though he did not mention it by name, it is possible that a surviving copy of From a Distance yet rests upon one of his many shelves, quietly awaiting discovery. If you idea. were, by some chance, able to save even a single book from the poor man's library, I know his soul would rest easier. Very well. When I next find myself in Walud, I'll be sure to pay Garnick a visit. All right, Torgal. All right, Torgal. Where are you taking me? I'm going to need a little bit more than that, boy. Do you have a better hint for me? Unless you've already given me one. Back on the rear deck, you were looking west toward Rosaria. Smart boy. Why don't we try the rookery? I haven't been to the island in almost 20 years. <coughs> to port is older then. Fingers crossed the old mooring is still there. Okay, so that's it. No more side missions. Here anyway. Here we go. Starting quests. Right back to where we started. Yep. Knock them all off one at a time. Mm. A chest. A boat. <laughs> it's still here. After all these years. A lot smaller than I remember. And you're a lot bigger. You might have to swim, boy. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't being serious. Your dead pancher felt like it was being serious. Yeah. Without me. I doubt that boat will hold a third. If it's fine. Sure. We won't be long. Hop in, boy. Race you there. I bet I could still beat you. Oh, there's a little treehouse thing. Cute. Big treehouse. It's giving me Tarzan vibes. <laughs> Jane? Here we are. This was our hideaway. Wasn't it, Toggle? Does Torgo climb like the animals in Baldur's Gate 3? Apparently we're not going to find out. <laughs> oh, 
Oh. Look how baby he was. Coming here helped me to forget who I was. Or wasn't. Prince. Shield. Son his mother could love. Her mother was terrible. I've been any one of those things. Perhaps. What is it, boy? This is all from the castle. And Phoenix Gate. Did you bring these here? Oh, his barring sword. Well, well. <laughs> you never stopped looking for me, did you, boy? <laughs> oh, my good boy. Thank you. For never giving up. For never forgetting. <laughs> Let's take this with us, shall we? So I don't forget either. To the wall. To the wall. That's not the way back to the boat, Toggle. Yeah, that's where we're going. All right, all right. I'm coming. After you. I think I know where we're going. People always talk about the importance of putting the past behind you. But without it, we wouldn't be who we are today. And we certainly couldn't steer our way to a better tomorrow. Come on, Togo. Let's go home. <coughs> Sorry for the wait. We're ready. Why the hell? Oh, he's still here. I thought he was leaving. Here to help me pack. There we go. Thanks, but I'll be traveling light. I'm almost finished already, in fact. You're really going to go through with this, then? I am. But before I go, there is one small issue I'd like your assistance with. Well, two, in fact. Okay. If it's within my power to help you, I will. The children? There's two of them. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the children. I refuse to let them share in my disgrace. And if I leave them here, they surely will. Our friendship would see them ostracized forever. But I can't take them with me either. I can think of only one place where they are certain to be safe and provided for and loved. The hideaway. Yeah. Fine. Of course. Got enough children. The children, children would be more than welcome. Sure. Thank you, Clive. more chaos. <laughs> I'll not forget this. Nubor, are you still here? What is it, Ferda? You look pale. There's been a flood in the Velcroy, a damn big one. The League of Outlaws encampment was completely submerged in ether. What? Uh oh. Every last one of the bastards has turned, and they're headed this way. Bandits are one thing, but Akashic bandits are quite another. The town guard won't stand a chance against them. 
We need to evacuate. There's no time to lose. Just let it happen. Further, gather the men. The Akashic may strike at any Part of me is like, must make ready to come and just evict you for simply telling a little bit of a They're a bit bigoted, but I guess that doesn't mean that they should die necessarily. Shouldn't they? Change of plan. The children stay with me for now. I need you to find Conrad and Natalie. How would they feel if any one of them had to prepare for a full and immediate evacuation? Understood. I'll do what I can to convince everyone else. Wish me luck. You have to listen to me. They're coming. You need to Why do they always have to make such a... Huh? Ah, it's you. What do you want, Lord Underhill? To pass on an important message. There's been an ether flood out in the Velcroy. The camp where the so-called League of Outlaws were gathering has been swallowed. They're no longer just bandits. They're Akashic now, and they could be here at any moment. You need to begin preparing for a full-scale evacuation right away. They're not going to do it. Oh, do we? And who was it who gave you this disturbing news, might I ask? Fools. Ball, perhaps. The man spreading the same poison out in the square as we speak. You may believe his lies, my lord, but we know better. But why would he lie about something like this? It wasn't even him that told us. Yeah, no. Revenge, perhaps. If he had not been unmasked, he may well have been elected our leader. A great honor for one of his kind. Well, one he might that. well feel yeah. aggrieved at having been denied. Lord Underhill, forgive me, but it has become all too evident where your sympathies lie. Lubor cannot be trusted, and neither, therefore, can you. Yep, we leave this town. You trust me. Yep. But for the sake of your people, ask yourselves if there is any chance that this is true. There isn't. You can be certain of that. <clears throat> now be off with you. You know, the entire world's not, you know, being covered in aether and blight. You're making a mistake. Oh, that's okay, Clive. We'll just, you know what, let, let it fall. Come, Clive. If our words will not move them, then we must find another way to help save the town. You're right. Let's speak to Lord Ferda. Uh, I think we'd better shut up. What's Lubor raving about now? Further. Sid, what's wrong? I went to warn Conrad and Natalie about the Akashic, but they wouldn't listen. They've convinced themselves that nothing Lubor says can be trusted. The bloody fools. Which means the town guard can't be counted on for support. But I can. If there's anything I can do to help you defend Dalamil, you only have to ask. I appreciate it. Sid, further! I've been looking for you everywhere! Victor, I thought you'd left. I couldn't abandon a friend in need. And Blue Boy is in need at this very moment. Come quickly. Did he go oh, and find them? no. I hope not. Uh oh. You have to believe me. The Akashic are coming. They don't eat, they don't sleep, they don't tire, and they don't care who they kill. They're unlike anything that's come before. There will be no parley, no mercy granted! We may have saved the town once, but this is different. I do not ask that you forgive me, but please believe me. If you do not run, you will die. You will all fucking die. Huh? <laughs> You'd like that, wouldn't you, Bearer? Ugh, oh, these people. Yeah, with us out of the way, your kind will be free to claim Dalamil for yourselves. It's you who should run. <laughs> 
Run, Farah! Yeah, yeah, run! Run! Yeah. Far, far Just away! Run! Just go, Farah! Let the town burn. Let the town burn? Wait, someone's coming. Stop! You're hurting him! What did Lubor ever do to you? Hmm? He solves all your stupid problems, and he keeps all of you safe. You know there's nothing he wouldn't do for this town. Who was it who made that cleaver you use every day, Conrad? And what about your counting table, Natalie? Who fixed that? Whose men make sure the streets are clean so all your boots don't get dirty? You're Who spends dirty. all day every day making sure things run smoothly around here? And none of you ever say thank you, ever! Yeah, you tell him. But did Lubor ever complain? Well, does he ever stop smiling? He keeps this whole place going! And you act like it doesn't even exist! Lubo, we've heard enough. No! Wait! We will not run. The town guard will not abandon the very place it is sworn to protect. And I will not give up for lost the stores that we labored so hard to fill. <sighs> so tell us, how do you propose we deal with these Akashic of yours? Neither he is. Ah, oh, people are the we worst. We won't run, but we will fight. All right, then. Can't believe him. Fine. I'm gonna take these kids and I'm gonna get the out of here. Yeah. Gather around if you don't want to die. Allow me to explain the situation. The ether flood occurred near the village of Cheratina, deep in the Velcroy. The place had been abandoned for years, until mm. the League More of mercy. Outlaws decided to make it their base of operations. Now they're all turned, and if the scouts' reports are correct, heading in this direction. They are mindless monsters, driven only by hate and rage. And they are utterly unpredictable. With the bandits, we at least knew how and where they were likely to attack. When these creatures come, Delamil will have the bitterest fight it has ever faced on its hands. The town guard will muster at the north gate. The rest of us will take the south. Both forces will provide men to serve as scouts and messengers, ready to spread word of the size and nature of the Akashic force as soon as it is spotted. And as soon as it has been, we will converge on its position and see that it is driven back from Dalamil at all costs. Conrad, can I count on the support of the town guard? Always. I leave the selection and coordination of the messengers in your hands, Victor. And the command of our men in yours, Ferda. If you would both be so kind, consider it done. As you wish. Natalie, I would ask that you and your people have the townsfolk barricade themselves inside the bathhouse. And tell the merchant not to waste time securing anything beside the essentials. Preserving life is our one and only concern. 
As long as we survive, it doesn't matter what trinkets we might lose. Our riches can be regained. And if anyone doubts that, let it be known that the Briar's Kiss stands ready to cover any losses. Very well. I shall tell them. Where do I fit into this plan? Where else but the most perilous place of all? <laughs> I'm off to travel to the home of our erstwhile League of Outlaws, Cheritina itself. The main host is most likely still there, and Dalamil will not be safe until it is eradicated root and branch. Fair. A little gardening. How pleasant. <laughs> I doubt it. I have a feeling these weeds will be particularly stubborn. Luckily, so am I. So you are. All right, then. We all know what we have to do. Now it's simply a matter of doing it. For Dalimil. Well, this is where that storm used to be. Yep, of course. There it is. The flood. The what's waiting for us inside. Can't be anything good. Nope, it's Dav not a brothel. I don't know that that would be classified as good either. <laughs> not bad, just Can't morally gray maybe. Right. Depending on. Yeah, you lose that. myself. Yeah. Just ran into it. Yeah, literally. Guys, don't die without me. Gentlemen, cow cute. Nice try. Are you a gentleman? I let you have first lap. Not as much as my stuff does. No, well, against a smaller guy, it's pretty good. That's true. Not the way that big one does, though. Holy smokes. No. Good night. Nice. The league is disbanded. <laughs> it's a I one way to put it. and see how the others fared. Everybody's good now. All 
the Akashic we were able to find have been dealt with. Seems that might be the last of them. The last of them here, perhaps. Lubo, Sid, Clive has returned. You asshole. Clive. You almost ruined everything. I almost what ruined everything. Tarantina? It's done. Root and branch. I knew you wouldn't let me down. Thank you, my lord. Friends, the Horde has been driven back. The Akashic have been defeated. And we need not fear the arrival of any more, thanks to Clive. Yeah. Victory Clive. is ours. We bloody did it. <sighs> we saved Dalamil. Who did? <laughs> we. Lubor, allow me to apologize. After all you have done for this town, we should never have doubted you. But we did, and for that we are truly sorry. We only hope that you can forgive us. We need you, Luvor. Dalimil needs you. So, if you would still like to be considered for the position of mayor, you have our backing. You do remember that I'm a bearer, don't you? We do. But that is not a stain on your character. It is a stain on ours. We thought only of what we perceived bearers to be, not what you truly are. The man who saved Dalimil twice over. I see. But I will only accept your proposal on two conditions. There you go. Name them. Firstly, that you will both do everything in your power to rally your people to my cause. If the Town Guard and the Merchants League do not accept my leadership, it will be doomed from the start. Unity is the key to defending Dalamil, and I do not doubt that we shall need to call on our combined strength again. When that time comes, I will expect us all to pull together. Just as we did today. Of course. You have our word. And secondly, you will accept that if I am to lead you, the mistreatment of bearers must end here in Dalamil. Any bearer within our walls shall be afforded the same rights as any other citizen. They will not be judged by what they are, but who they are. As we failed to do, and came so close to losing everything. We agree to your conditions. And we have only one in return. That you continue to work for the good of Dalimil. As you always have. You don't get to make any conditions. I'll do as I please. Condition accepted. Oh. I'm torn because I'm part of me is like they suck, leave them. Mm -hmm. But the other part is like airship is all but confirmed. A bearer as a, as a mayor, sort of that's a step hand. forward for everyone. Mm -hmm. And now I find myself her leader. Here. For everything. Cigars. Lubo. About the children. Fear not, you are of course relieved of your responsibility. <laughs> I would sooner face another horde of Akashic than see them brought up as outlaws. I'll make sure they're safe here. I don't doubt that you will. And not just the children, but everyone in Dalamel. I'll do my best. Can't have all your hard work going to waste. Cool, 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 cool. Cool, 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 Let's cool. move on. So much to do. So much to do. Let's go. What would you do? Would you be mayor or would you leave the town? Let us know in the comments below. Which way would you sway? I feel like I would let it burn, but at the same time, I say that knowing that I probably wouldn't. Same. Like, I want to be the person that's like, nah, you guys suck, I'm out. But 
the greater good would always prevail. Yeah. Damn it. Why has to be so good? Why has it to be so good? Yeah. I'm gonna have a really hard time with the Dark Urge playthrough. I think that one's gonna be more fun, though. Oh, look, Mungo Byron's here. That can't be Rutherford, can it? Or at least that's what that looks like. Nope, maybe not. I lied. It's Rutherford. And, uh. Oh, the other guy. Chapman. Turn coats and cowards, the lot of you! If it's a fight you want, it's a fight you shall have! Allow me. I don't need your... Please, uh, Field Marshal, oblige him. This won't take long. You're right. It won't. Oh, you obviously have no idea who I am. Men, finish him. Huh, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> You're adorable. <laughs> You're adorable, yeah. Try it, come on. Who wants the first swing? Nobody? Here we go. Part of me really wishes you still your tornado because that would have been really funny. Just let go alone, spin. Joke. Who did the heal? Him. Too bad we're gonna knock him over. Just Extra crispy. These guys are still just like, yeah, I'm sure that's fine. Field Marshal Havel, I presume. Are either of you injured? No, my lord. You arrived just as our escort turned on us. Well, that was your escort. Fucking yeah. traitors. Unacceptable. I'd heard reports of soldiers in the outlying regions abandoning the oaths they swore. Well, to break your paladins? Well, but I hadn't paladins. thought the just corruption had reached so close to the heart of the Republic. It's a fucking disgrace. Your interfering old bastard of an uncle tried to warn me, of course. My lord, Marquis. Or is Sid the outlaw more to your liking? Mm. Call me what you want. It doesn't change who I am. Or the urgency of the message I bring. My uncle has a plan to right the realm. And he needs your help to see it through. Before I agree to anything... I'd have you answer one question. What do you stand to gain from all this? Really nothing. You're quite Sleep. Home. I that I might benefit from further chaos. That I seek a new beginning for all of us. And while the choices I've made may not always have been the right ones, I know I made them for the right reasons. That's a good answer. For so long, so many of us have been told how we could live, how we could die, when it should have been our decision all along. 
Now we have a chance to put things right. But in order to take it, we must stand together. Even if it be beside those with whom we don't see eye to eye. Certainly not the words I expected from an outlaw. But perhaps your uncle was right. You are no ordinary outlaw. I'll never hear the end of this. All right. I'll start by ordering my most trusted guard to bring the Dalmechian fringes under control. Next, I'll make contact with my counterparts in the Imperial Army and see if I can't convince them to try and restore order in their own territory. Thank you, Field Marshal. But they are not the only ones we will need to convince. What do you mean? I don't doubt that I can bully some sense into a few generals. But those they answer to require a different kind of persuasion. And when it comes to honeyed words, well, we will need an envoy. One who can court even the most stubborn of statesmen. You, perhaps. I'm flattered. But I'm no diplomat either. No, he's really not. He Send Gav. Problems to attend to. What we need is a skilled arbitrator. And I may know just the person. Is that so? And Jill? would he happen to be an outlaw too? Of a different kind, perhaps. Oh, beggars can't be choosers. I suppose we'll all have to find a little of the outlaw in ourselves if we're to make it through this. Very well. Send your man to me right away. I shall. Or Dion, maybe. Uh, my lord, Marquis. Your lord uncle bade me escort the field marshal to his manor in Port Isolde. And I will see that my associate joins you there. Very good, my lord. Who is it? Who are you sending? Yeah. Huh. An envoy. I'm not sure I'm the man to talk anyone round. I can Mark. barely convince my brother to take his medicine. <laughs> well, this is a job for someone with experience. For Byron? Maybe. Someone like Quinton. Oh, Quinton! Of course, duh. Duh. Obvious. Obviously. Yeah, nice. Oh, you. <laughs> Your Grace, my Lord, I trust your journey was not overly onerous. Cyril, you found a letter from Father. Right. Yes, I have it here. If you would do us the honor, my Lord. My beloved sons. I know that I ask much of you in this coming war, but I see no other way to secure a future for our duchy and our family. Yet even should we succeed in subduing the savages and winning back Drake's breath, the threat of blight still looms. And only with all, Rosa only with all Rosaria striving as one might we at last overcome it. I have plans to see us through, but such are the obstacles that stand in our way. It shall likely fall to you to continue my work. I know that you have the strength, courage, and the will to do so. This shall be an arduous inheritance, and so I offer you another, that you might be reminded of the love and the faith that I hold for you, for both of you, your father. Aww. An inheritance. It would seem the late Archduke penned this missive shortly before his passing. The day before we left for Phoenix Gate. He knew. What are these plans he spoke of? His plans for the Duchy, Your Grace. Your father entrusted them to my predecessor, the former bearer of the Burning Quill, Have you seen Dr. who entrusted them in turn to me. The complete emancipation of bearers is their stated aim. Freedom for all. But your father's dream did not end there. His grace also spoke of building hospices to care for those stricken by the curse, and the founding of a new university to further the development of non-magical technologies. With the blight spreading ever more widely across the twins, Archduke Elwyn 
saw this as the only means of securing Rosaria's survival. He wished to see men and bearers treated as equals. To see centuries of common wisdom overturned. Small wonder he did not think it achievable within his lifetime. Flame in the corners, he thought it achievable. The house is on fire! <sighs> Had he not, he would never have written this message. Nor would he have entrusted his vision to his most faithful aides. Those who would have stood with you, shielded you from the machinations of the less benevolent personages at court. It's a pity only they are still with us. Hmm. It is true that those most loyal to your father were the first to suffer the Duchess's wrath. But one at least remains. And she has come bearing gifts. What do you mean? Mayhap it is better that she explain, my lord. After all, the duties entrusted to me by my predecessor extended only to recovering his grace's will and arranging a meeting with the one who might execute it. Or a part of it, at least. And where is this woman? She awaits you in the archive, your grace. Thank you, Cyril. This is ominous. Seriously. Shall we then? How'd you put up with these guys your whole life, <laughs> Joshua? Because, no. How did you remain having any emotion at all? Hey, I wasn't done in there. How dare you? Oh, you've got another mission? Lord Why couldn't you just hand it over while we were talking? Right, you had to kick us out. What is it, Cyril? One of our brethren lately journeyed across the strait in order to pursue a new avenue of inquiry in our ongoing investigation. Okay. He sent an owl some while ago, but we have heard naught from him since. Was he surveying another fallen ruin? No. The object of his study was a savior cult that has arisen in ash in recent years. We believe it may have some connection to the Circle of Malleus, an ancient religion that worshipped Ultima as its god. By gaining an understanding of this new faith, we hoped to learn more of the Circle's original beliefs. And so you sent one of your brothers to Ash, a continent teeming with orcs and Akashic. Fully cognizant of the risks, yes. I entrusted the mission to one of the life. most able of our order, the third chair, a master of the arts of combat and survival, both. Flash is sick and tired of people doing some stuff. <laughs> yeah. Some days now. I mean, I have thus far refrained from dumb. sending That's true. the others. <laughs> Why would circuit. you? He's you not concerned even about. You didn't even kiss Jill yet. Yeah. Yes. yeah. It seems He's not so much concerned about the dumb shit he does. He's concerned about the dumb shit everyone else does. Let me do the dumb shit. Unique experience yeah. of the perils. Let me carry this burden of a hundred people. So no problem. advised me. It would not do to abandon a man to his fate when he might yet be saved. It would not. Fine. But Ash is a big place. Can you be any more specific? Perhaps. The last owl I received from him mentioned a village where he had heard the cult were wont to assemble. Mickelberg was its name. It lies in the southern reaches of Walud. If aught ill befell him, I expect it did so there. Right. I'll see what I can do. You are much too kind, my lord. Go then, with my hopes. And may the firebird's flame ever burn in your heart. Bye! If this new faith really is an offshoot of the Circle of Malleus, then... Let's concentrate on finding the third chair first, shall we? So it's these stones to Canva, and the rest of the places... Oh, yeah, they're pretty sure... There we oh, go. okay. Now it's below me. Now it's below me. Mm. And a scratch on them. These hides will actually go quiet. My lord, your grace. I... I hardly recognize you. I don't recognize you. 
I am Goditha, retainer of House Rosfield, oh. loyal servant to the Phoenix and his shields. Oh, damn. Okay. Your father, the Archduke Elwyn, entrusted me with the delivery of a gift. I only hope you can forgive my tardiness in oh, bringing it to you. Years. Lift up your head, Lady Goditha. You have our gratitude for your service to our house and to our father. I merely did my duty, as any proud Rosarian would. My lady, perhaps you could explain a little more. What exactly is the gift you bring? As I'm sure you know, it has long been the custom for the children of House Rosfield to be presented with certain keepsakes upon their coming of age. Indeed it has. Our father often spoke of the day when our turn would come. And had he lived to see it, he would have presented you with the treasures I bear. Matching armbands for you both. Aww. Alas, he did not live. Indeed, he was taken from us even before they could be completed. He had intended to claim the heartstone with which each armband was to be finished himself. But it was not to be. And his gifts remain incomplete. I see. You want us to go do the work for our gifts? Cool. It's yeah. Me to bring them before you, as they are. It was your father's wish that you be presented with the finished articles, not these works in progress, but with his grace long since gone, and the stone left unclaimed. I had little choice. You are grown men now, and his house is yours. And while I would not presume to insist upon your claiming the heartstone in his stead, I know that nothing would have pleased him more than for you to do so. Thank you, Lady Goditha. What say you, Clive? What else? No, it's not to finished. Rosaria. Of course, my lady. May our father's will be done. Oh, I am much obliged. Do you know where we might find this heartstone, my lady? I do. Though it may be a matter of a good deal more than simply happening upon it. It is found in the bellies of Elder Griffins, you see. Yeah, I'm not worried. You do at least know where <laughs> to find one. A certain specimen has made its nest in Titan's Wake, not far from here. A certain specimen? You are most perceptive, Your Grace. In answer to your unspoken question, yes. In fact, this is the very same beast your father meant to slay. I have been tracking its movements since you were but a boy. Were you to slay it in his stead, as men of House Rosfield, it would surely make your father proud. What say you, Joshua? What else? There's probably a bunch in here and a whole oh, bunch shit. over there. This is going to have to be a two-episode. Yeah, we're just going to finish it off. Titan's Wake is to the yeah, south of here. Yeah, to the Griffin. But, yeah, finish the Magia. Then we'll move on to Waylude. Eyes peeled, Joshua. 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 Oh, into the cave. That's promising. It's just a little. Oh, there it is. Hello. Just awaiting for us. Of course it is. There it is. Hey! For House Rossfield. Good boy. Oh, hi. He's got tornado. That's my old move. Oh, 
that and when he puts a tornado out, it's kind of bitches. Oh. Under brooms. Buddy. What are you doing? That was really cute. That was really cute. Fight me? You trying to show me you you can fight Griffin? Your claws like right in. Hey, what can I do for you? Oh, that you made it. See, look what you did. It went to the ladder instead of going in the door. Oh, no. Hey, oh, thank the founder you were safe. The griffin is slain then. And the heart stone yeah. played. Did you done us? This radiant luster, like frozen flame, it is just as your father described it. Thank you, my lord. Your grace. Your father would be so proud. Lady Goditha, the lapidary is ready. Thank you, Cyril. I will be with him shortly. If you would excuse me, I shall have the stone cut and set forthwith. The armbands are complete. Pray, take them. They are yours, after all. Heartstone is harder and more enduring than garnet, or even ruby. It symbolizes unwavering will and devotion. And the graven vines encircling the stone represent the unbreakable bonds between you. It's a message. Father knew we had enemies both inside and outside the duchy. Enemies who would thwart his vision. Only with unwavering devotion would it ever be realized. And only if we stood together. As Phoenix and Shield. As brothers in arms. Only then might those enemies be overcome. Indeed. His grace knew the enormity of the task he would entrust to you, his heirs. But this was more than just a message. It was a promise. That he would always be with you. Thank you, Lady Goditha, for remaining the steadfast custodian of our father's will. Forgive me, my lady, but there is something I don't quite understand. The Undying told me that after father died, mother claimed all of the ducal treasures for her own. Even if the armbands were incomplete, she would surely not have overlooked them. So, how were you able to keep them from her? Because I was the keeper of the vault. 
Though I was but a lowly servant, your father spoke to me of his intentions for the bands, of the deep love he had for both of you, and his hopes for your future. In the days before the disaster at Phoenix Gate, I discovered that the Duchess had ordered her jewelry be sent away from the castle. It was then that I knew she meant to betray us. I tried to warn your father, but it was too late. When word of the fire reached Rosalith, I knew my time was short. So I took up the armbands and I fled into the night. And thank the Founder you did. Yet my duty to your father was incomplete. Not knowing what else to do, I followed the griffin, thinking I might claim the heartstone on its passing. And so my pursuit continued, until Lord Cyril appeared before me. He informed me that his grace's will had been recovered, and that his sons were alive and well. Lady Goddatha, on behalf of my father and all the people of Rosaria, I thank you for your loyal service. As do I. Thank you, my lord. Your grace, for coming back to us. For giving my service meaning. No, oh, bless her heart. Eat her heart. Get out of here! <laughs> bands suit you well it must be gratifying to finally receive the inheritance that was denied you for so long My band. it is and we thank you for the part you played Cyril <laughs> the you guys don't want to play my part a little longer they put it in their pockets might I suggest that you make your way to your father's memorial let him see that you have received he looks good eyes like where <laughs> Good point, good point. Good point. Yeah, you're right. I suppose it would be churlish not to. What do you say, Clive? Should we pay your father a visit? I think we should. Maybe if we'd had their other equipment I on. I was hoping to show. be able to yeah. offer him my thanks before we left for Again, Origin. Your father's helm is enshrined there. It has been since since the day we recovered it from Phoenix Gate. It wasn't I overlooked. Really was you're in talking to her and for looking out the door. It is a part of your inheritance. And I do not that doubt cool. that your father would prefer it in your hands mm -hmm. than perched upon so some lonely rock. The clouds. Thank you, Cyril. Come on, Clive. He's waiting. 